What's up humans, it's Steven, and we are finally here with Tales of the Jedi. Oh my god, I am so <laughs> pumped. Alright, so for those of you who are new, uh, I love Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars is my favorite property of all time. Seen all the movies, read so many comics, seen all the TV shows. Um, I'm 27, so I grew up with the prequels and Clone Wars, so this is like perfect for me clone wars is still my favorite uh form of star wars media of all time like it's gonna take a lot for that to be topped uh but yeah i love star wars star wars is really what inspired me to go on to my artistic journey uh, star wars inspired me to go to film school star wars inspired me to start writing um yeah just like when i was a kid when i saw episode three and just seeing like all the story connect it really just made me want to uh create stories and create art that was uh as impactful to someone else as star wars was to me so yeah that's my background on star wars uh i'm super excited to get into this so thank you so much for joining me and let's do it This is Ahsoka's village. Whoa, this is animated kind of different. It's beautiful though. I love it. He's so happy about his girl. Man, we never really get to see Ahsoka's people. I love the textures. It's kind of grainy. Almost like it's shot on film. Oh wow, look at that droid. Oh, he hangs onto the side of the house. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh man, she looks just like her mother. Wow, look at that shot. <laughs> oh my god, she is she looks just like her mother. What? That's some mentel mix. <laughs> oh that's amazing. You got the painted background. And the foreground is a little bit uh, 3D animation. That's cool. Look, Asuka. Everywhere there is life. Value. Honor it. <laughs> and value and honor life she does. I wonder is it always the mother that takes the baby out on the hunt or does the father sometimes do it too on their first year? She's so aware at a year old. Uh, this feels like Tarzan. A big cat creeps. That is a big cat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. I like it. Oh. No, not the baby. What? She didn't hit? Dang, she has the moves. Let's go. 
Oh, he took her. Bro said, I'm not leaving empty handed. <laughs> she looks so cute just being dangled like that. This definitely feels like Tarzan. Oh, what a shot. Is she gonna ride it back to camp? Oh, she did ride it back. Oh, it's so great. The force is strong with her. <laughs> I know everyone is just like <laughs> baffled out of their minds. Like, what is happening right now? <laughs> She's like, I got a new pet. Can I keep it? <laughs> I collect them. Sigh of relief. <laughs> Everybody just. <sighs> she know what's up. <sighs> yes, she is. For for a time. <laughs> for a time. <laughs> Okay, that was episode one. Love it, love it, love it. Not gonna do too much discussion because we're just gonna go ahead and get right into the second one. But man, um, what a way to start off this series. I mean, we pretty much got the gist of this episode from the trailer, so not too much happened outside of what we were expecting. But it's just nice to be in this world to see the art style because um, I couldn't tell from the trailer. I mean, I could tell that the art style was a bit different than Clone Wars and like Bad Batch and all that. But, like, this is actually quite different. Like, the the anatomical shapes of their faces, I mean, we kind of could see that in the trailer. But there's almost, like, this film grain effect uh, going on. Um, kind of make it feel like old school Star Wars where it's shot on film. And, you know, I'm kind of into, into it. Uh, I like how the backgrounds are, like... The further back you go, there's more. It's more of a painterly look, and then the for the further forward in the foreground, you have more of a animation style. Um, I think, I mean, it's a 3D animation style. And I think that's really cool because I really like, even in my own art, I like leaving a lot of texture. Like Star Wars in previous years has gotten very clean, whereas old school Star Wars had the uh, had the texture and grittiness of you know a place far far away so i think i think that was an interesting choice and i'm i'm curious to see you know that art style in these next doors because it fit here um in this sort of rural er area so it'll be interesting to see it in a uh a more you know like coruscant which i imagine that we're going to go to or the jedi temple um that's going to be interesting to see but yeah um good start and let's just go ahead and get into the second one Why gone? You look good, man. Set us down well clear of the village. Tensions are high enough. What planet is this? It's so interesting seeing Qui Gon as a as a uh, <laughs> as an apprentice. Dooku in them cloaks, man. That is a straight up dog <laughs> okay what are they afraid of <laughs> even that joy is like nope don't do it oh I would not be drinking in that bar you get tetanus from the cups <laughs> this place is a lightsaber on the table. <laughs> oh, this lighting. He is one of the longest standing senators in the Republic. And when you enter this village, you could see the effects of his long standing policies. Oh, man. With due respect, if you don't like him, why not elect a new senator? It's not that easy, cuz. I wish it were that simple. You're one of the king. I'm fighting words, bro. Have 
have been treated well. For a prisoner? Yes. How much of an ordeal? Not compared to how these people are living. Ah. Uh. And you are not aware of these conditions? I rarely leave the capital. When I do, I spend time off world on Corson. Not here. You don't blame them for abducting you. What choice do they have? It's all about perspective. They needed him to see. He's here. And he's brought soldiers. I am so ready to see Dooku whip out that saber. <laughs> Did I arrest these criminals and have them release my son at once? I'm afraid our investigation is not yet complete. Let me assure you your son is in no immediate danger. I'll be the judge of that. Step aside, Jedi. Cannot... You do not want this smoke, I promise you, Senator. No. We serve the people of this republic. Yes. Show me. Oh, the blue blade. Oh. Famous last words. Oh, they actually about to do this. No, not the twilight. No. We need to end this quickly. Ooh, that shot. You can see the stubble in Dooku's face growing. <gasps> Not a force choke. Oh, he has had enough. <laughs> oh, that is dark side AF, bro. <laughs> Jesus, this is like Anakin. <laughs> yes, this is the only way it's gonna solve. Let your son, let your son come out. <laughs> they should have done that from the beginning. Let him come talk. Ooh, Dooku, chill. Yo, he is really trying to snap the life out of this dude. How could you do this? These are your people. Nothing worse than having your own son be d disappointed in you. I will not allow your suffering to continue. Nice. I promise. But how fast can you make that change happen, though? Because, like... I ain't ate in like three days. <laughs> Is it gonna take a day, a week, a year? Your actions save many lives today. Nice. I'm glad he acknowledged that. Well then, you're a much wiser man than I, Qui Gon Jinn. Thanks to your teachings. You can see Qui Gon stubble too. Okay, episode two. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm super happy about this. One of the things I've always wanted out of Star Wars is to see on camera more of um, Dooku's turn to the dark side. Because just like how Anakin's falls to the dark side, uh, and you get to see that play out in Clone Wars was so compelling. I always felt like Dooku's falls to the dark side could be even more compelling simply because like knowing the reasons why, you know, reading the old lore, reading the books, um, and just knowing certain, you know, aspects that go down about why Dooku, you know, defected to the dark side, like just even things about like his sister, how the Jedi wouldn't allow him to see his sister. Uh, it's, it's so great to see, um, you know, this finally, you know, realized in, you know, a cinematic version of it because a lot of time, because, and it's, it's very interesting that they're intercutting. Uh, Ahsoka and Dooku because they are pretty much two sides of the same coin. They are two people who defected from the Jedi, who became, who were, you know, brought into the Jedi from an early age, but ended up defecting from the Jedi simply because of they didn't like the things that they saw within the Order. 
um, they, they saw the hypocrisy within the order and how it didn't hold up um, to the ideals that they had. However, Dooku is the one that defected to the dark side and Ahsoka is the one that defected into something else entirely becoming, you know, not not Jedi nor Sith. So it's, it's very interesting. I'm loving the concept of this show. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get into episode three. Mace, let's go. Oh, he's got the beard now. Senator Lurie's testimony isn't enough for you. And if Master Catley was killed, how could the Senator escape? Why are you concerning yourself with these questions? The Council gave us our instructions. To return Master Catley's <sighs> Mace's biggest flaw, man. So she can have a proper burial. Your devotion to rules is sometimes inspiring and sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's so frustrating, because Mace could be so... Dang cool. Oh, this dude has been through some stuff. I'm pretty sure that's the same voice actor who plays um, Mason Clone Wars. Why would you choose to go without a security detail? Because I hope for peace on Raxus. And I'm willing to do anything. Raxus. Wasn't Raxus in um The Force Unleashed? Like Raxus Prime? I'd like to see where you and Catry went to meet this informer. To go back there and relive the incident. Yeah, I don't believe you, bro. Dog, they all got scars in their face. It was too late to save Master Catry. Ah, something hella fishy. Or we should play it out. Oh my god, Mace. You are a buzzkill, bro. That's a blaster. I guess the other one was from a blaster as well. I couldn't give you an exact number. What did I Oh, <laughs> Duke will be ready with the blade. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> well, that's enough talking. Oh, oh, these are some cool droids. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> We've seen Mace do that move so many times before. Oh, jeez! You guys were no match. That was so quick. <clears throat> quick with it. We are part of a group who learned Larrick was using his ascendancy to become rich at the expense of our people. <sighs> he was willing to bleed Braxis dry, luring off world companies to come in and industrialize the land. He was selling off our plan. Peace. Yep. It's the nature of politicians. Because we were going to force him to put forth our own agenda at the next Senate hearing meeting. Why didn't you take this to the proper authorities? Country was a keeper of the peace. Jedi are lapdogs of the Senate. The bidding always comes first. Oh, shoot. I'm surprised to hear that from a Jedi. Make sure your people don't lose arms. They all so much. It's the only way you truly have to make today. Wow. Wow, what a real one. Oh, Master Sanube. That's cool. 
I don't know if I've ever seen a Jedi funeral like this before. You will be presented with Master Jedi's council seats. Oh, he wasn't on the council yet. Is this something you knew was happening before we left for Francis? What? Wow. Oh, that little shadow. A little bit more darkness added to Dooku. That's that's nice. Okay, so that was episode three. Man, like, I really already very much enjoy this because there are some things that they hit on um, that... That really, really needed to be addressed in the Star Wars universe. First of all, Mace Windu. I love Mace. I love his fighting style. I love that he's black. I love his lightsaber color. But man, he, anytime he is not in like a movie or a TV show, uh, up until now, he is a buzzkill. Like this representation of Mace Windu is so accurate because you read him in comics every time they go about the mission, this dude is by the book and it, it it is very annoying as Dooku was alluding to uh another thing that I really like about this show is just as Clone Wars showed the galaxy losing faith in the Jedi this show is showing the galaxy losing faith in the Senate um and how corrupt just how corrupt the senate is and it's it's kind of amazing because you look at it and you're like man uh, yeah palpatine orchestrated a lot but he kind of slid in at the perfect time and then obviously he knew that this was a perfect time but the galaxy was already losing faith in the senate the galaxy was already losing faith in the jedi and what better way to send them over the edge than by starting a war and so it just again shows the genius of palpatine and also, like, a lot of this stuff is, like, it's, it's real life. I was even talking about this in my Arcane uh, review and discussion. Um, one of the episodes, I think maybe episode eight. But it's, like, when it comes to a Senate, when it comes to politicians, things like that, politicians should never, never move away from the place they represent. There should never, like, you shouldn't have politicians living in a central location. I get it. It's easier for meetings and stuff like that. But when they move away from the people they represent, they stop caring about the needs of the people that they represent. And you look at Senator uh, Orrin Frita, like, he did not give a crap about the Twi'leks. You look at all the Twi'leks, he's the only fat Twi'lek. He is huge because he's in, he's in the council and he's up there just eating. And his people are struggling with war and starvation and all this stuff that they never asked for. And he's just over there just chilling like, oh, yeah, nah, everything all all good on my end. And so it's always a bad idea to have your senators, your representatives not be where the people that they represent are because they can't understand the daily life and the daily struggles of the people they represent so how are they going to be able to you know influence laws that will make life better for their people and then you see you have other uh senators who are taking advantage of people and just like bleeding them dry allowing them to starve and it's just it's it sucks but man this is an amazing way to show to get a better glimpse of the galaxy at large and that's one thing Star Wars has kind of been doing ever since the original trilogy was over. Unpacking a lot of things that go on and kind of dissecting the, you know, the idea that it is a story about good and evil when it's really a story about perspective. So many people across the galaxy are being affected by the actions of the Jedi and the actions of the Senate. Um, and those people, just because they don't like the Jedi or they don't like the Senate, doesn't make them bad. That's why... It was the separatists before it was the empire. These people were were separating themselves from the idea of the Senate because the Senate was letting them down. <laughs> and it continued to let them down all the way until the end of the war. Anyway, I'm really enjoying this and I, I can't wait to get into the next ones. But um, anyway, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you all in the next one.